take the red pill. This is the ice caps are melting to 1%. Greetings and welcome to another installment of One Charge Challenge where we look at a product's most fun features through a series of challenges in a single battery life cycle. Charging up over here, we have the biggest iPhone that's ever lived. This is the 12 Pro Max. We're gonna focus a lot on its camera today because it's got the biggest sensor ever in an iPhone, the farthest optical zoom ever in an iPhone, and I think someone who might be considering buying this huge thing is probably most interested in its camera or just because it's huge. We got a lot of phones to compare it to today. We got last year's iPhone 11 Pro. We got the newish iPhone SE. We have a Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. And just for good measure, my personal iPhone 10 with a cracked screen. And uh, I don't know how I got so many phones. But once the 12 Pro Max charges up to 100, we are gonna go from zero to 100. Alrighty then. So we just moved in, as you can probably tell by the echo in my voice, we don't have a lot of furniture, so I'm going to use the iPhone 12 Max's new LiDAR capabilities, which are supposed to enhance the phone's ability for augmented reality, as well as other stuff like better autofocus and low light, which we'll get to later. But then I'm going to use a couple AR apps and try and decorate my new home. We're going to start with the Primer app, which can scan my walls. I'm going to start with just this one little section of wall and it's gonna give me all these wallpapers. I like the Stardust Midnight. I'm dragging the wallpaper and it's realizing my TV stand and going behind it. So it's really sensing the depth there. And there is kind of what that would look like, a big sheet of wrapping paper on my wall, which will fit with the Christmas tree. Now we're gonna use the Wayfair app to see what some furniture looks like in this room. I'm gonna pick the Lehman 50 inch square arm love seat. Here's the Wayfair app scanning the room. Took a while. I'm gonna place our love seat right there. And I can kind of move it. You can see just how much surface area that'll take up. And you can come get different perspectives on it. Pretty cool how intact it stays. But then you reach out to touch it and you realize, yep, you did take the red pill. Good choice. All right, sorry for editing out all the best parts of that montage, if you know what I mean. Suddenly, by accident, I'm dressed in a Canadian tuxedo. And if you're one of those people that likes to walk around with their phone in their shirt pocket, her style, this really isn't working for me, at least. But overall, I actually thought it felt, in pants and shorts, not that bad. Let's let editing put this case on. Wow, that was fast. And so we got this rubbery case in my tightest pants, my Canadian tuxedo pants. And it surprisingly doesn't feel that much bigger than my iPhone 10, but that doesn't matter. Please get me out of these clothes and take me outside. So the 12 Pro Max is supposed to have even better video stabilization than last year's model, which I happen to think was already pretty great. So I'm gonna skate a couple laps around my neighborhood and compare this to the 11 Pro and a few others while we're at it. Kick things off, here's the iPhone 11 Pro and the 12 Pro Max, and I'm gonna give you a few seconds to guess which is which. While you're guessing, I'll give the usual disclaimer that this is a compressed YouTube video, and the image will vary depending on your screen. All right, you ready? The 12 Pro Max is on the left, and the 11 Pro is on the right. If you got it correct and claim to have known 100%, I'm not sure I believe you. At least in this good light, it's hard to find differences between these two. I was already a big fan of the 11 Pro's video stabilization and still am, so obviously the 12 Pro Max should be at least as good as the 11 Pro. But at least here on the skateboard, or dolly as I like to call it, it's hard to say if it's better than last year's iPhone. If you squint, you might be able to see minor differences in saturation and contrast, but it's all pretty negligible. And just for good measure, here's the old walking up the stairs test. The difference in images is more obvious stacked against the S20 Ultra, and picking which one you like better is definitely subjective. But image aside, the stabilization on the iPhone wins by a mile. You can really tell in these walking shots. The iPhone is just buttery smooth. Okay, now let's take it back to 2017 with my personal iPhone 10. Now the improvements to stabilization are more obvious here, but again, in this nice light, and especially in this shrunken down side by side, I think my 10 holds its own. Let's 
Mitchell, my brother. What's going on? Would you say that I look high definition gorgeous right now in the HD FaceTime? I would say that the HD FaceTime on you is magnifique. <laughs> All right. What do you think I should do next? Hmm. Well, have you tried testing out the 5G in your area? So I've been driving around looking for a 5G signal and surprisingly, the 5G icon seems to be showing up a lot in my area. I stopped here because I saw some people skating and it happens to have full bars of 5G. But let's just pretend I'm on my way to the airport and I start panicking because I forgot to download my favorite source of comfort, which happens to be the Great British Baking Show, of course. So we pull over and we go download Collection 8, Episode 8. And there we go. Start the timer. Now, like everyone said, 5G works a lot better if you are within eye shot of a 5G tower. I purposely didn't want to do that because, let's be honest, if people want to use 5G, they want to use it wherever. They don't want to seek out where a 5G tower is. I do see some sort of cellular tower right there, although I have no idea if it's actually 5G. All right, we're almost there. It's just a sliver now. All the decisions I've made in my life have added up to this moment. Oh. Bam, there it is. Stop the clock. Okay, if I was going to the airport, I'd probably risk missing my flight. But this is on Verizon's nationwide service, and it's technically mid-band 5G. Mid-band gives you a much wider range of coverage, but it doesn't give you those insane speeds that you've heard about on millimeter wave 5G. I shot a CNET video in Chicago where we were right next to a millimeter wave 5G node, and we downloaded a movie in like 10 seconds. But forget all that wonky stuff. Let's go see some art. All right, so we're in the Arts District, perfect place to walk around, try out the new 2.5X telephoto camera. Let's do it. Let's make a long story short and sum it up as quickly as we can. The 12 Pro Max takes great photos, and again, in nice light, all of these phones do an awesome job. Sometimes it was hard seeing any difference between the 12 Pro Max and 11 Pro. The 2.5X telephoto is a nice addition, but still can't get you anywhere close to what the Samsung can do. The iPhone SE only has one wide camera, but at least in circumstances where you don't need zoom, especially for how much cheaper it is than all of these other phones, I think it does a great job. I'm talking to you on the phone now in front of my Highlander because I thought it'd be cool, and as you can see, the headlights are on, which means it's getting dark, and you know what that means. When the sun goes down is where the 12 Pro Max finally pulls ahead of the 11 Pro, especially in video. It's still got a good amount of noise, but it's definitely an improvement over last year. Here it is against the Samsung. Photos are still pretty close, but the 12 Pro Max does have a little bit of an edge, and you can take portraits at night, which is fun. Here's one with a bright street light, one with some low ambient light and night mode turned off, and here's one with hardly any light at all. I actually found myself turning night mode off a lot to get a more natural looking photo. All right, it's late, it's cold. Got about 30% battery left. See you in the morning. All right, so it's been a little over 12 hours since I saw you last and I have not touched the phone much. It's mostly just been sitting idle and it's only lost a couple percentage of battery, so that's pretty good. And on day two to start our journey to 0%, we're gonna try and edit some of our shots we got yesterday together. So open up iMovie. I'm not really sure what I'm doing. I have a couple loose ideas. I'm gonna bring in the audio from the skating under. Jesus is like, I want you to skate. We're gonna do a lot of trees. Tree overload. My specialty is tree overload. There's another perk of using your computer. It's a lot easier to scrub through footage. I can't find this one that I want. It's not the finest work I've ever done, but it's something. Let's export it. Battery level is low for sharing. Sorry, pal. Let's check it.
So we have 18% left. What's gonna bring us on home? Keep hearing about this thing. I don't even know what it is. I gotta say I'm already captivated. No idea what's happening. Do you want the food? Oh, not having it. Well, I think that means I failed the cat challenge. She thought something was up, and rightfully so. In the meantime, we're gonna watch some Netflix. How about some Our Planet? Rated PG, fear. It always gets caught every time. The screen looks really nice. I like Our Planet, but geez, I was not anticipating watching it for this long. It would be perfect if the wolf catches the caribou just as the phone dies. All right, finally, just as the ice caps are melting, we're to 1%. This is kind of a sad ending, I gotta say. We have been at 1% for a long time. Oh, there it goes. I didn't sit in this rocking chair intending to watch an entire episode of Our Planet in the middle of the day, but the iPhone had other plans. I still need some time to do some editing, gather my thoughts, and hey, maybe next time you see me, I'll be wearing a new shirt. It's just magic every time. Okay, so that was a lot harder than I was expecting it to be. What do we think? First of all, I'm impressed with the battery, but you should take that with a grain of salt. This phone was not fresh out the box, and that was not a scientific test by any means. Not to mention I didn't use it into the night or overnight and until we were filming again. But lasting well over 24 hours with everything we did is a good sign and probably shouldn't come as a surprise since this is the biggest battery in any iPhone. All right, we also talked a lot about the camera. You're probably sick of me talking about the camera. There's a lot of nice upgrades and low light, but especially when compared against last year's iPhone 11 Pro, the differences don't immediately jump out at you. I should also note that right after filming these couple days, Apple released its Apple Pro RAW photo format. We're still trying it out, but stay tuned for future videos. But if you're looking to get the most future-proof iPhone with all the bells and whistles and have an extra $100 to spare over the regular 12 Pro, then I think it's a no-brainer. The build quality feels really nice, the screen is amazing, everything performs fast and smooth, everything feels really premium, which it should at $1,100. Check the links in the description for more iPhone videos, including in-depth reviews, camera comparisons, and we even took the iPhone 12 to Lake Tahoe for an extreme water test, and spoiler alert, a bear ate our stuff. I am not kidding. There it is, right there. Anyway, I think that's gonna do it. Did I miss anything? I'm sure I did, and I'm sure you'll tell me about it. But thanks so much for watching. As always, be excellent to each other, and Happy New Year.